Mechanically, the way that the frame functions is a lever and traction system. The weight of the body becomes the counter traction uh, by flexing up the hip and laying the femur against this blue support bar, it actually acts as a fulcrum and then we can lay traction through the ankle and foot either through skeletal traction, manual traction, or actually attaching it to the distal foot attachment. Conceptually, the distal femur is actually quite flat and so this lends itself to have a good interface with the fulcrum. This allows then uh, traction to be applied and you have complete uh, radiographic visualization of the tibia and also 360 degree access uh, to the tibia and distal femur. Another addition that can be made to the distal part of the frame is a second multi-hole support bar. This is uh, placed over the uh, guide posts uh, so this would be on the dorsum of the foot and then using these long blue tees you can actually isolate the foot and ankle so you can move the foot and ankle into a anatomic position secure the two blue tees around it and now you can strain the foot for traction for rotational control the body uh, the proximal femur acts as a counterweight. The proximal blue support bar acts as a fulcrum. And now by loosening um, the thumb screws 360 degrees on both sides, we can have our assistant uh, grab both uh, goal posts and actually start placing the leg under traction. So this will give you a general skin traction of anywhere from 10 to 25 pounds. Alternatively, a calcaneal pin may be placed um, and now the calcaneal pin will serve as a traction point that we can pull on the pin for traction. Uh, in cases of non-union or difficult reconstructions, there's ample room to apply a femoral distractor within the frame construct and use this for the most uh, extreme degree of traction that you might require.